So if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you've probably noticed that a lot of the software that I like to run is very terminal based, very hackable software. So today I'm going to talk about why I do that and basically the benefit that they get from it. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So there's a bunch of different reasons why I actually do stuff like this and I'm gonna go through it over the course of the video. I'm gonna probably be jumping back and forth because I haven't planned this out like I never do so we'll see how this goes. But anyway, I think one of the first big reasons is that when you work within say a GUI application you typically have to do it within the GUI way. So if there's some like sort of weird workflow you have to work with. For example, let's go with GitHub Desktop. So I have looked at it a little bit and when you use it, sure you can do basically everything that you want to do, but there's still this underlying sort of workflow that you have to work with. And it's not as bad with GitHub Desktop, but with something like the built-in Git thing for Eclipse or for like Visual Studio, there is a sort of assumed workflow that you have to go with. Whereas that doesn't exist when you're using just the terminal Git. You can do whatever you want. If you want to just completely break your repo, you're entirely free to do that. And that might sound like a bad thing, but with that also comes the freedom to actually work exactly the way that you want to. If you do want to have like some assumed workflow, you can always build up your own sort of like tool set to actually work with a tool like Git. You don't have to actually work with the predefined one that comes with your IDE or something like that. But when you're using the IDE ones, even if it's not entirely obvious, the workflow you might be doing might fit perfectly with the tools that actually come with a GUI application like that. And most people's do. But when you start doing more complicated stuff, there are times when there's going to be these disconnects. And what you end up having to do is going back to the terminal anyway. So you don't really end up saving any extra time because you've got to like try to debug it within the GUI and then you're like, oh, maybe the GUI can't do it. And you're like, oh, okay, let's try it with the terminal. It's like, oh, this just worked straight out of the box. And that I think is one of the benefits because and it's not just with Git, it's also with, say, configuring a window manager or configuring any application, for example. Like, say, we take i3. So I recently switched from the i3 window manager to BSPWM. And the reason that this is a really good change for me is, so I do like i3. I think i3 is a really good window manager. It's been good most of the time. I've had some hiccups along the way with it, but for the most part, it has been a generally good application. It's been a generally good window manager. But the problem with it is that BSP doesn't have is that i3 has this predefined syntax that you have to work within. And it works most of the time. But the problem is that you don't actually, unless I'm mistaken, you don't have a way to access the node tree. So what ends up happening is that if you want to do something that's outside of the box, like Typical stuff you can do, like if you want to say, move a window to a different workspace and then jump to that workspace, you can do that just fine. But if you want to do anything that doesn't fit within the keywords that are defined within i3, then you are completely out of luck. You can't do anything with it. You've got to just either come up with some weird workaround and maybe you can get it to work if you can make the keywords fit with what you want to do. Really, there's going to be a lot of times, especially when you're doing more advanced stuff, that it is going to be a problem. And that's when something like BSPWM comes in, where you have this programming interface. I've mentioned this in a previous video that you have complete access to the node tree with. So what you can do there is you actually have the ability to query for where nodes are in the tree. So you can query for nodes on, say, you want to move everything from desktop 10 to desktop 5 and then hide everything that was previously on desktop five. That's something that you can't really do with i3 because that's a, it falls outside of the general scope, but because you have complete access to the node tree and you can just modify the state of each of the nodes, just completely however you feel like doing it, you can do really complicated stuff. And obviously a lot of the stuff is gonna be pointless, but there, as I said, there might be workflows like that, that for whatever reason you have some reason you wanna do that. I don't know what it would be, but 
there are times like that where you're going to want to do something that doesn't fit within the general workflow of an application. And when it comes to more hackable software, typically they'll either have programming interface to allow you to actually do that or just like with, for example, the configuration file for BSPWM, it doesn't even have any sort of like predefined syntax. All you do is when you want to configure it, you just interact through that programming interface. There's no weird syntax, there's nothing like that. You just do what you want. And I think the next thing we should go to is things like Suckless. So with the Suckless software, you have complete access to the source code, which a lot of the time, is not really that useful. But when you do want to do something like say, for example, if you have a terminal that doesn't support the ability to print out arbitrary text of the terminal bound to a key press, then with most terminals, you're gonna ha either have to write some weird plugin to do it, and then you're gonna work out how the plugin interface works, or if you can just get complete access to the source code, you can make use of the functions that are already there and then just work exactly how you want it to do it. And if you want to even do more complicated stuff outside of that, like say your terminal doesn't support ligatures, you can't, maybe you can do that with a terminal if there's some programming interface to let you do that. But if you don't have access to ligatures, then the only way you're going to do that is by either finding a terminal that does it, or if you have access to the source code and it's just the general accepted way to modify the application, then it's just going to be a lot easier to, I guess, work through that. Because sure, with any open source application, you can go and modify the source code, but typically there's not going to be any help for it for things like, say, I don't know, URXVT. And even with Suckless software, even though there's not really too much help there. It's definitely getting better. And there are a lot of posts about it and you can find a bit of help. It's obviously not gonna be as good as some things like the bigger projects are gonna be much easier to actually find information on, but you can at least find a little bit for stuff like this. And ultimately, even if you can't find anything and you've got to learn everything by yourself, I'm not looking for the most I guess, user-friendly software. I'm not, like if I wanted to just have a completely user-friendly distro and I wanted to have just user-friendly software, I would probably download like Ubuntu and run Gnome. Actually, no, I'd probably get Manjaro because I like, I do like the AUR. The AUR is something that I'm never gonna be able to leave because it is honestly the best thing about using Arch. But if I just wanted something that was completely user-friendly, I would probably run something like Manjaro with XFCE or KDE or just something like that where I just have this prepackaged thing that I can just get all my work done with. But for me, I don't just really want something that's set up in just some way. I can modify it, obviously. You can go and modify KDE. People have done some crazy stuff to it. I find the most fun working with computers when I'm just doing everything by myself, even if I'm not really getting anything too productive done. I enjoy just the tinkering process of oh, I broke this thing today. Like, for example, we'll go back to BSP for a second. So when you full screen, it doesn't actually hide the windows behind the full screen window like i3 does. So I'll show you what it looks like right now because I have uh, fixed it. I just moved around my windows for some reason. Anyway, so we've got all of these terminals and what was happening before with BSP is if I was to full screen, let's say this one on the left here, I would still be able to see these windows here, but I've managed to fix it now. So if I full screen this now, you'll notice the other ones are hidden. You can still see the poly bar. I need to fix that. I'll get to that at some point. But right now, this is a much better state than it was in because now I can actually have this transparency here and I don't have to actually see the things behind it. And obviously I could just run i3 and have that perfectly fine, or I could run basically any tiling window manager that handles that for you. Or even a floating window manager if I really wanted to. I don't want to run a floating window manager. I might do a video on why I think floating window managers are a massive waste of time. But anyway, I'll get to that at that point. Basically, even though I could find window managers that do all of this for me, I enjoy the process of just trying stuff out, breaking it, trying something else out, breaking that as well, and then eventually getting to the point where I have something that at least looks like it works, even if it's not the most efficient way, even if it's not the, I guess, the most elegant way, even if it's just an absolute hack. I enjoy the process of just going through and learning and actually 
working out how, how all of these systems work. It's something that I've always been interested in. Like the reason I got into programming initially is because I just enjoy playing around with computers and that's how I then ended up getting into Linux and then getting into doing these videos. Because basically all I'm doing with these videos is I guess getting my thoughts out and documenting the process of working through Linux and working through programming, just all of this stuff that I was already thinking about. So it's not really like I'm doing any extra work. All I'm doing is just giving my thoughts out to the world and hopefully you guys get something enjoyable out of it because I'm, I'm getting some positive feedback. So it seems like people are enjoying it at least and I'm enjoying making it because the other thing with this is when I actually play around with this hackable software, I managed to actually learn more and more about these systems, even if it's not useful information outside of that system. There is some information that is transferable, especially when it comes to things like, for example, with this full screen thing, information that I've had from working with some programming languages with like objects and stuff, because the way you um, actually work within like the query syntax for this is it's very similar to some stuff that I've done before and information from that was transferable to this and I've actually been able to do it much quicker than I would have been able to otherwise. And basically I can, even if it doesn't look like the information can be transferred and all the skills can be transferred, there is something that you do get from it. And ultimately, I actually said ultimately before, this is the actual ultimately. It's just fun. I just enjoy playing around with computers. Even if it's not really getting anything done, I enjoy the process and I'm definitely not going to change it anytime soon. So if you just want something that works, then run iTerm, run just whatever you want and just enjoy it as it is. But as I said, I just want to be able to tinker with my computer and just have it exactly the way that I want it to be. Even if it's not really, I guess, giving me any productive benefit because Obviously, I could run iTerm, I could run UrxVT, I have run UrxVT, I don't particularly like it, but I could run iTerm, I could run console instead of using ST, and I would have basically what I have, because pretty much what I've done is turned ST into one of those other terminals, but I've enjoyed the process of actually doing that, and that's really the, like, that's really most of it, just... I enjoy the process of just playing around with the computers. So I think that would be pretty much everything. I think I might be starting to ramble on. I can't really think of any more thoughts. So I'm probably going to end it here. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this where I just ramble on off the top of my head just doing sort of a more vloggy sort of format, let me know and I'm happy to do them because they're always fun. And if you want to see those videos when they come out, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. Down below, I've got my library. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check that out. If you want to chat with me, I've got my Discord, so go check that out down below as well. If you would like to support the channel, I've got my support links down below. Obviously, don't feel pressured to ever do that because all my videos will be available for free, so feel free to just watch them as it is. But if you do want to support, go right ahead. And up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video is in, so go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. And also down below, I've got my Twitter and my Macedon, so if you want to get video updates, go check that out as well. And I think that's pretty much everything for me now. I'm out. I don't know if you can hear it right now, but there is a plane going overhead, and I don't particularly want to record this section again.